Good day YouTube, welcome back. All right, Thursday morning here in Australia, market still holding above 1.5 trillion, which is nice, up around 1.1 trillion. Uh, sorry, up about 1.1%, 1.1 trillion up. That would be nice, not quite there. So yeah, 1.5 trillion and up 1.1%. So a little bit sort of stagnant at the moment. Don't get me wrong, any gain's a good gain, but things have just teetered off a little bit and we'll have a look at the chart shortly. But you know, still, any move upwards is nice. You know, that old saying, any gain's a good gain, but you know, we can't keep going up forever. As I said yesterday, you know, eight green candles in a row has me a little worried that we're gonna see a bit of a retracement coming sometime soon. Might be this weekend, could be later today, tomorrow, who knows, but I don't think we're too far away from it. Now, we may not get a heavy retracement though. It could be just a very small retracement and we keep rocketing to the upside and that would be really, really nice, but I just get the feeling like this weekend, you know, once we get close to that $42,000 mark, I think a lot of people are going to want to go long on Bitcoin. They're going to get super bullish and it'll really depend on how many people are trying to long it and then it'll probably go short and then everyone will start to go short again and all of a sudden it'll go long. Uh, classic sort of market manipulation and the big boys uh, counter trading. But there's no guarantees in life and nothing I offer is financial advice anyway. But let's have a look. Dominance, 48%. It is growing. More people are getting into Bitcoin at the moment. The, the tension is building, as they say. 24-hour volume, nice, not too bad at all. And gas prices still sitting around a dollar, so it's not super cheap. But look, it's not overly expensive considering where it's been in the past. All right, I mean, have a look at that. It basically looks like a sea of green, hardly any red in there at all. So let's have a look. What's performed the best in the last 24 hours? Because there's got to be some big movers. I mean, have a look at XRP having a nice climb right there. Very, very nice. All right, there we go. Thorchain making a comeback up 20%. So people haven't lost faith in it yet. Two hacks, you know, hopefully they get it fixed. Terra Luna is just screaming very very nice and then pirate chain good lord is that still around uh amp doing nice leo token again xrp litecoin nice making a bit of move so some reasonably good gains there you know a number of double digit gains which is really good what about losses though i mean the market was only up 1.1 percent in total so were there any losses some that you know may have hurt people in the top 100 not really, Huobi token down a little bit, but not too much. OKB, Theta down a little bit more. Uh, Harmony, look, single digit losses and only really one that makes it over kind of, you know, 5%. So really, really low. Synthetics uh, still just kind of chopping and changing around. A lot of people probably scared with regulatory concerns and all the rest of it. Uh, I still like synthetics, I'll still be buying. And like I said, I was worried that they had been completely delisted from Uniswap wasn't actually the case. It was just from their website that their coins were sort of removed. But then again, I went there and found them. So not quite sure what's going on there, but I'm still super bullish on synthetics. I'll be holding on to that. VeChain uh, down, looking at a pretty good price. I think they got up to 22 cents thereabouts. Uh, so if you can pull, uh, pick up some VeChain for around 8 cents, I think that was. Probably not a bad buy and Polygon sitting around a dollar. Look. Hardly any losses uh, and a couple of reasonably good gains, not too bad. So let's jump over to the Bitcoin chart and have a look. So here we go. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight green candles. And this is just about to click over for the day. So likely it will close with eight green candles in a row. But have a look at this green candle that's about to close. It is looking like an indecision candle. So again, with the weekend coming, Friday not too far away, then Saturday, Sunday, definite possibility that we see a bit of a retracement. Will it be a big, horrible retracement? It, it could be. It could be something that we have a reasonable size red candle to get us back down to here, about 36,000 maybe. But then we also have a red wick candle that maybe brings us all the way down into kind of 32,000, maybe even 30,000. Not saying that's what's going to happen, but it is a possibility because if we get up to around about here, there's a possibly a whole lot of people starting to go long on Bitcoin and they'll want to do something to ruin all the longs and uh, lot, ruin all the shorts and then bring it back to here uh, and then maybe start to go long. But again, the key resistance levels, it's kind of that $42,000 mark thereabouts. And then it's really this downwards trending line that I'll be looking at. 
is the 200 day moving average we want to get above that but it's definitely possible that we come up hit this maybe even only just kind of break out for a moment and then we start to form new lows so that's really what i'm looking for i'm hoping it's more that we break out and then come back down and retest this line and start to move up that would be ideal but no guarantees in life we'll have to wait and see at the moment things are looking good so we'll just uh Hang on to that positivity right there. <laughs> All right, a couple of interesting news stories. So Uniswap, Ethereum's largest decentralized exchange by volume, is looking to expand into the consumer finance, at least according to a deleted vid YouTube video from the ETH CC conference that was held in Paris last week. So in a talk at that event, Ashley Schwab, Uniswap's uh, growth lead, said the team behind the trading protocol is in talks with well-known fintech companies to provide decentralized finance to the mainstream. We're trying to put Uniswap and the rest of DeFi right there in those applications so that we can bring the dream to open 100% uptime liquidity to the whole world, Schwab said. PayPal wants to talk to us, E-Trade wants to talk to us, and Stripe wants to talk to us. Now, none of those got back to Coindesk when they wanted to speak to them about it, but this is very, very interesting. You know, it's it's easy to get carried away sometimes to think, all right, here we go, this is going to become, you know, open to the world any minute now. And it, you know, I guess it depends on what you consider to be a minute in the overall time. Now, now there's the literal word of the minute, it's not going to happen in a minute, but I also don't think DeFi is going to open up to the entire world in the next probably year or two. It'll open up to kind of big players and it'll be there for then it to be slowly rolled out to the world. I still think we're probably about maybe another decade away from full on crypto dominance sort of getting out. I wouldn't, no, not even dominance actually, but I think we're still probably about a decade away before it's openly used by a lot of people around the world. You know, I got caught up in the midst of things last time in 2017. I was like, this is going mainstream. And then even a little bit in this kind of bull run that's happened and now we've had this downwards uh, kind of correction retracement. You know, some people are still calling this a bear market and maybe it is. But that's what just kind of brings me back and gets me grounded. I do think these big DeFi plays eventually will go sort of worldwide. Now, whether it's going to be Uniswap, something could come and take it over, or Aave or Compound or Make or anything like that, we'll have to wait and see. But I definitely think it is coming. And, you know, Uniswap, get that layer two stuff sorted, uh, all the, you know, bring the fees right down so it's literally just sensed, you know, to try and, uh, not to try, to do trades and things like that. It'd be hard to see Uniswap being beaten. And particularly once we get the EVM compatibility compatibility going for Ethereum so other networks can all easily uh, adapt to it. And that's the way it is. It's going, you know, interchain. They're all going to be, you know, working off the back of each other. I think it'd be hard to knock off Uniswap. Not impossible though. You know, Cosmos has got their gravity decks coming out. That's very, very interesting. You know, you got lots of other sort of swaps doing the same thing as Uniswap, Sushi Swap. Uh, you know, tons out there, but I do think DeFi is slowly starting to make headway and it won't be too far away. Again, you know, companies, you know, like Stripe, E-Trade, PayPal, they get on the back of Uniswap. Very, very interesting and things are looking promising. All right, Engine, got more, more collaborations coming out. I mean, you know, Engine really is at the forefront of the entire NFT sort of space. They, you know, they set the the standard for it and, you know, people want to get on back of that. So Division Network bring a new NFT experience on Engine Blockchain Network. So Division has migrated to Engine Blockchain and will now leverage the potentials of launching an NFT metaverse across five different blockchain protocols. It should be recalled that Division Network was initially launched on Ethereum, as was Engine, and also supports the Binance Smart Chain Network. But Engine is going kind of blockchain agnostic. It's still on the Ethereum network, but it's also getting on Polkadot. And as you can see, Binance Smart Chain uh, is going to be linked up uh, through the Division Network. The NFT space is going to be huge. It's just about trying to pick the winners. And for me, I really thought 
engine was just the easiest one you know the developers of engine they basically wrote the code for nfts and so i just thought that's where i want to put my money and if you go to the charts for engine at the moment it's actually looking like it is a really good buy at the moment again not financial advice uh, it would have been nicer to get into engine you know way under a dollar and i was lucky enough to get into engine at under a dollar and as always i only wish i had bought more but engine is looking pretty nice at the moment. It really looked like it's kind of flatlined a little bit and not in a bad way. It just had its run up, now it's come down and holding nicely. So I don't have an engine chart for you today, unfortunately. I might do that over the weekend, have a look at where some of these coins are at. But I know at the moment, engine is looking sweet. I just don't have any money to be putting in right now. But if I did, I'd be looking at engine. I, I like the chart of that. All right, moving on. Chamath Palapataya, hopefully I said that right massive bitcoin sort of i wouldn't say um yeah actually he was he was considered a bitcoin maxi has he now changed his tune so it says he has well one of his companies has partnered up with a Sol solana based saver protocol so the solana based uh cross-chain stablecoin exchange has secured 7.7 .7 million dollars from industry investors including chamath palabatai's social capital so I'm sure uh, Chamath isn't like full running this. There'd be a board and everything like that, although it is his, you know, part of his sort of company. He's been, you know, Bitcoin focused for so long and, you know, really was not overly keen on any other cryptos. But it seems I've, uh, you know, I've seen a couple of interviews lately where his tune is slightly changing a little bit. And I think that is going to show you exactly how the rest of the world is going to be. And even the most massive bitcoin maxis i think they can see what's coming it doesn't mean that they're suddenly going to want to dump bitcoin bitcoin is that store of value it's going to be like gold it is digital gold is it the best asset to have your money in uh, for gains no but it is the safest and of all the cryptos it is the most stable outside of the stable coins but then there's a whole risk between stable coins are they truly backed and all the rest of it for cryptos again outside of stable coins bitcoin is the most stable which is funny because i mean it dropped 50 percent but when it dropped 50 percent, everything else dropped 60 70 80 90 percent so again i think bitcoin remains that way and you can you know put your long-term sort of holds into things like bitcoin because it will be the most stable but there are bigger gains out there and look some really good cryptos coming through we spoke about that story from Senator Warren just yesterday. How she's saying, you know, finance and all the rest of it is going to be taken over by these shady coders. Are there shady coders out there? Absolutely. But there's, you know, in the grand scheme of things, there are tiny percent. Most people coming to this space are coming with good intentions and hoping to build, you know, the next big thing. And there's heaps and heaps of good. Uh, cryptocurrencies out there like ethereum and again personal opinion only you know solana from what i've heard i haven't got any solana haven't really looked into it too much it's not that i don't know anything it's similar to ethereum but you know better but doesn't have the developers and all the rest of it and better is you know uh what people are saying i'm not saying it's better i, I like ethereum you know polka dot cardano these are really good projects with people that have been in the space for a long time I don't think they're coming here to do shady stuff. Now, I'm not, again, none of that's financial advice. I don't know that for a fact, but I just think there's so much fight out there from, you know, people who just simply, I don't think they want to understand or they are trying to fud it so they can build a position in it. Because otherwise, if you did a bit of research, you'd know that this really is going to be massive. This is where everything's going. It's going to be on the blockchain. Is it going to be... Bitcoin forever? I don't know, but it's looking pretty good at the moment. Is Ethereum going to be, you know, the number one kind of layer one solution of the blockchain? I don't know, but it's looking pretty good at the moment. Is DeFi going to take over, you know, from banks and everything? You know, I don't know, but it's looking pretty good. And that's really where I am. I can't, you know, tell you with 100% certainty that it is going to happen. But I can tell you from my point of view, I think it is 100% certainty. Now, that's my point of view, not, again, me telling you it is going to happen. It's just me thinking that this is what's going to happen. I think Ethereum, 
and if not Ethereum, some other thing like this is absolutely going to be at the forefront of everything in the future. I think it's going to be Ethereum, hence why I've put my money where my mouth is, but I think there's space for others. Solana is something I might have to look into, uh, as into buying. Again, I do know about Solana. It's not like I don't know about it at all, but you can't sort of chase everything, but maybe I might get a position in Solana because I've got a position in Polkadot, I've got a position in Cardano, and I've got a position uh, in Cosmos, and a lot of hype around Solana. But it is interesting to see that, again, some of these you know people who are just Bitcoin basically maxis, they're even starting to change their tune. I think they can finally see what's coming. They've been able to take those blinkers off and think it's Bitcoin and nothing else and gone, oh, you know what, there actually is other stuff because Chamath was getting into NFTs a while ago and there's no NFTs on Bitcoin. So yeah, very, very interesting. And look, he's, he's a smart guy. So I always had the feeling like even he was going to come around eventually. The same as, uh, what you call it, Michael Saylor is coming around. He's seeing that there's opportunities out there. The same as, oh God, what's the guy I'm trying to think of? Completely had a mind blank. Uh, massive Bitcoin bull. Uh, that's all right. If it comes to me, uh, I'll come back to it. But there are lots of people. Oh, sorry, uh, Raul Paul. At first he was all in on Bitcoin. And now he has got more Ethereum than Bitcoin. Still got a good position in Bitcoin. And he's even moved into other things. That's the way it goes. Once you get onto Bitcoin, it's the thing that brings you across. And again, the most stable, the original, the real. Get onto that and then you start to see that there's a massive space out there and Bitcoin isn't the be all and end all. It's really good, I love it. It makes up a big portion of my portfolio and I won't be changing that. But there's a big wide world out there. You know that old saying and it's the same in the crypto space. Come, understand Bitcoin, get into Bitcoin, you know, make sure when you hear that you have a position in Bitcoin, personal opinion, not financial advice, because it is the core of it. But then you can slowly start to, you know, expand your horizons and have a look what's out there. But there are lots of scammy crap and just stuff that's going to go nowhere and is just a complete waste of money. So hence why I say start with the big caps, the ones that have been around for a while that have got history. Again, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, even XRP, uh, I don't think it's going anywhere. It's been around for a long time. It works. And again, you know, the rumors that it's going to be adopted, you know, they're kind of the things that I have uh, a lot of my capital in. And again, I got out of uh, XRP and, and I've kicked myself, but I finally, <coughs> excuse me, got back in and got myself a position, but I haven't got the position that I had before because it obviously costs a lot more money and I wish I had have just held. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, and so do some research. And again, very interesting that even some of the real hardcore, it'd be interesting to see what Tony Vase is doing uh, these days uh, and whether he's just 100%, you know, still a Bitcoin maxi. All right, moving on, Binance. You knew this was coming, and if you didn't, I mean, I've been saying it for a while. So Binance aims to be regulated everywhere. Of course they do. They're not going anywhere. They're not trying to uh, skip the law and all the rest of it, and they, they can see the writing on the wall. They were obviously, you know, not avoiding it, but regulation, there's a whole lot of rules and things and, uh, and guidelines that you have to follow. It's not easy to do that. So they were just putting off for as long as they can because there were no rules originally. And now they see the writing on the wall and they are going to get regulated. So the cryptocurrency exchange, which has been under pressure from financial regulators across the world, has plans to get licensed everywhere. Absolutely, 100%. I, I knew this was coming and they will do it and they will remain, you know, most likely the biggest exchange out there. But I think the regulators are going to make it hard on Binance. Uh, you know, they aren't inside that circle that, you know, BitBoys talked about the digital currency group and, you know, Coinbase and other things like that. They want to try and get to the top. And so I think Binance is going to face a number of hurdles trying to get regulated, but I think they will do it. Binance, uh, sorry, CZ is a very smart guy. Binance, it's one of those things that's almost too big to fail, as they would say. So congratulations to CZ. Uh, I'd love to you know, see this happen quicker uh, rather than later, although it's going to take some time. And like I said, I think he's going to face some hurdles. And even better, I'd love to see uh, Binance become decentralized CZ is still going to have his have his 
place in there. And look, he's made tons of money. He's, he's unlikely to ever be poor unless something seriously goes wrong from here. So he might just be sort of the face of uh, Binance. But yeah, decentralization is definitely going to be the key for Binance if it really wants to be big uh, with the people. Because I think you know a lot of people are going to move away from centralized stuff in the future. But that still could be decades, maybe even 100, 200 years away. So we'll wait and see. Right, Ethereum, it just, it really is growing. And again, I've got a good position in Bitcoin and I haven't really sort of changed it, but my Ethereum has grown by so much that it's overtaken my position in Bitcoin. Originally, Bitcoin took up nearly 50%. I think it was 50 plus percent of my total portfolio. Uh, and it's gone down, not so much from me selling. I've sold some Bitcoin, but I've also bought back in. But just Ethereum has outgrown it by a country mile. And now Ethereum makes up, I think, 40% of my portfolio, a little bit over 40%, uh, and Bitcoin is now under 30%. So Ethereum and Bitcoin make up basically 70% of my portfolio, and then the other 30% is in a mixture of different altcoins. But Ethereum trading volume growth outpacing Bitcoin in 2021 report. That does not surprise me. Now, total exchange volume has shot up 1,461% to 1.4 trillion. Like I said, I, I can't tell you with absolute certainty because no one can tell the future, but I just get the feeling like Ethereum is going to be something really big. If ETH 2.0 rolls out with not too many hiccups and they get the scaling sorted uh, and the transaction fees sorted, I think it is going to be an absolute behemoth. I really do think it's going to be that big. Uh, and I love being in this space. Love to know your thoughts down below. Do you think Ethereum is going to be, you know, be like, I don't know, Google or Amazon or something of the blockchain space? I get the feeling like it is. Again, there are no certainties and guarantees in life. But again, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Uh, I've, I've got a position in ETH uh, and I don't plan on selling any anytime soon. I will eventually, you have to, you can't just simply sit in any one thing and there's going to be swings in the market. So I want to take advantage of that, you know, hopefully sell at a high price uh, and buy back in at a low price and, you know, then just get into other things. Because as good as Ethereum will do, there's going to be other things that will well outpace it. Again, Polygon for me, I got in at about two or three cents and it went to $2.20. I'm kicking myself I didn't take more profits I've taken some profits from Polygon uh, it owes me nothing now but I could have made a whole lot more money but I'm still holding on to it and we'll wait and see maybe Polygon can get back to $2.20 and go even higher that would be really impressive all right last but not least Coca-Cola everyone's jumping on the NFT train so Coca-Cola officially gets into NFTs for charity each NFT was created to celebrate elements that are core to the Coca-Cola brand, reinterpreted for a virtual world. Now the OpenSea, so this is where it's happening, the OpenSea marketplace will be holding a three-day auction for Coca-Cola branded non-fungible tokens starting on the 30th of July. The NFT collections created in partnership with digital uh, designer Taffy were inspired by video game loot boxes and contain hidden surprises available only to those who purchase the artwork. The friendship boxes uh, feature a classic features, sorry, a classic Coca-Cola water cooler. So real things, a wearable bubble jacket, which can be used in the Ethereum virtual base reality world Decentraland, a friendship card and a sound visualizer, which plays audio of a bottle opening. A beverage being poured over ice and the fizz sound common to carbonated uh, beverages. Soft drinks enthusiasts can place their bids in Ethereum through OpenSea until August 30th. So starts so August 2nd. So starts July 30th. So that's uh, tomorrow, but we're going stateside time. So for Australia, it'll kind of be uh, the day after tomorrow almost. And it'll be on OpenSea until August 2nd. Again, NFTs are going to be massive. I'm not saying these Coca-Cola NFTs specifically are going to be worth a lot of in, a lot of money in the future. They could be, as they're probably the first Coca-Cola NFTs. But the actual blockchain sort of stuff and the uh, the platforms that they're built on, I think, are going to be really huge. And look, there are going to be NFTs that are going to be worth an absolute mint, and maybe some of these Coca-Cola ones will be. 
it's hard to know but that's why i invest more in the blockchain and projects themselves than so much the individual nfts i just they're more a lucky dip for me i don't know enough about art i would be lucky if i bought one that ended up being worth a ton of money more than it would have been you know uh, because of my nft smarts or anything like that look that's it from me i'm not going to take up uh any more of your time i've got to get to work this afternoon so stay safe be kind to one another everyone should still be on that game train at the moment it's looking pretty good and i'll see you next time